Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, I do hope you're doing well. As you know, we're going to be right in the midst of the campaign. I mean, it's heating up right now. I figured give it about another two or three weeks, and then it'll really get heated up, and then we'll probably get some idea of what's really going on. So I'm not going to get in that at this point in time, but I am going to get in something pretty local. And uh, I don't know if you know, but we've got a sort of, here in Oregon, in Washington, right there at the borderline, we got a bridge to nowhere. We got a bridge to nowhere. And we've already spent some, uh, oh, almost about $150 million to date on that piece. But the uh, bottom line is that it's, it's a bridge to nowhere. We have nothing to show for it at this point in time. So we're going to try to see if we can make some sense to that term and all that I just shared with you. And I'm talking about CRC. Well, what does that mean? CRC, Columbia Crossing. CRC, Columbia Crossing. Okay. Hmm, interesting. Well, anyway, Columbia River Crossing. You, you know, Tom is helping me out on this end. As you know, we get, we're getting at that point in time in our life. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. You're a good person. I was really more into that bridge to nowhere. That's, really, that's where my heads were. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to do that today. No, seriously. We're going we're gonna to spend some time, give you sort of an update on the Cumberland River Crossing. Many of you really, it's not a sexy kind of a thing to talk about, but really, but the residents that live in that area where it's going to have an impact on, and also uh, other issues in terms of money, because as you note, the, late, the latest thing is that we're not in a recession anymore. We're in a depression, according to a number of people. I mean, money is tight at this point in time. And uh, $150 million already, and still spending, by the way, on an ongoing basis, it's a tough situation. So where are our responsible folks who are representing us on this issue? But what we're going to do today for you is that we're going to give you somewhat of an update on the Columbia River crossing, that whole project, and uh, and also then a more recent one that was, that I had the opportunity to to be a part of and be a part of. I was there to a certain degree, and I'm talking about when they were talking about the whole issue of the ways uh, of the, um, the the project and all. So joining me today uh, to talk about this, someone who has some historical background in this whole issue, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Jim Howell. He's been around Oregon and has been very much involved for quite some time. Uh, he's he's better heard of to date now because he's since retired, but now he's really more active now. He's really out there and really punching. And then with my dear friend Ron Buell, he's not here with us today, but he's been here before, as you know. And then Herman Cachel, I mean, he's probably the most active group on uh, on Hayden Island. Uh, he's on he's with help, and you learn a little bit more about that. But the bottom line is that thanks to to this particular group, Herman and his group, uh, he really kept the issue on the table. He's made sure that those consultants and and the states on both sides of the aisle are a little bit more sensitive about the fact that we are more sensitive besides just being a resident, but he's also a taxpayer and others. So with that, I'm just going to go right on in and uh, and give this over to Jim Howell. And before we do that, I've got a short tape, it's about eight minutes long, that uh, we're going to play for you. And then Jim will probably get in and just fill in the blanks. Okay. You think that's okay, Jim? What do you think, huh? Sounds good to me. Okay, let's do it. Let's go on and roll that particular tape, and then we'll just come, we'll come right back, okay? Interstate 5 near the Columbia River has a problem with congestion, especially during the morning and evening commutes. The Columbia River Crossing proposes to solve this problem with a new bridge and several miles of freeway expansion. The Common Sense Alternative to the CRC by George Crandall and Jim Howell offers a cheaper, faster, and better way of crossing the Columbia River. The CSA would address all the issues and the CRC's purpose and needs, but with a more practical approach that puts more emphasis on crossing the river and less on freeway expansion. The CSA has five phases. The first phase of the Common Sense Alternative would eliminate the need for 95% of the lifts on the I-5 Interstate Bridge. It would do this by fixing the downstream rail bridge. Currently, in order to pass under both the high point of the I-5 Bridge and the swing span of the rail bridge, river vessels have to perform a maneuver called the S-curve. 
If the S-curve is too difficult to perform in the fast-moving current, vessels use the drawbridge on I-5 instead. A fixed add a center lift span to the rail bridge would allow river traffic to pass under the high point of the I-5 bridge without having to perform the S-curve. This fix would also upgrade this, the only rail bridge for miles, which also happens to be one of the oldest bridges in the area. The second phase of the CSA would construct a multimodal bridge to Hayden Island for light rail, motor vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians. It would connect to Expo Road in a configuration similar to that of the CRC's Concept D. The third phase would be a new bridge for commuter trains, frequent fast intercity trains, cars and trucks, and bicycles and pedestrians. By taking passenger trains off the existing rail bridge, the new bridge would provide more track capacity for freight trains. This bridge would connect Marine Drive and Mill Plain Boulevard, allowing trucks to bypass I-5. It would allow rail commuters to travel between Vancouver Station and Union Station in Portland in 10 to 12 minutes. And it would be located far enough downstream from Pearson Field that it could have a tall, elegant, two-tower cable stay design without interfering with air traffic. The cost of this new rail bridge would include a viaduct over the North Portland Freight Junction, a bridge over the harbor, a crossing over Hayden Island, the cable stay bridge itself, and a new passenger platform for Vancouver Station. Phase 4 would upgrade the I-5 interstate bridges to current seismic standards. Standards which, in the entire Portland region, are currently only met by the new Savi Island Bridge. Phase 5 would construct a multimodal bridge between Hayden Island and Vancouver for transit, local auto traffic, bicycles, and pedestrians. This bridge could be built using an economical pre-stressed box girder style of construction. The CSA could be built with a phased approach that would allow its effects to be evaluated in stages. It could provide the rail facilities that will be vital to the region's future. And it could offer resilience in the form of more ways across the river. And where the CRC would cost $3.6 billion for a solution that's more freeway than bridge. The CSA could offer comparable capacity for far less money. The Common Sense Alternative. Cheaper, faster, and better. Okay, all the way back, folks. Well, what do you think about that? What do you think about uh, almost 1. What, 1. 1.8, 1. 1.3 billion, as opposed to maybe 4 billion? Wow, that's huge. Well, look, we've got Jim here, and like I said before, we're going to go do go back a bit and get a sense of how we got to where we are, and then uh, Herman and I are just going to kind of intervene at time whenever we want to, and Jim, you just keep on talking. Okay. You're there. Jim, yeah. give us a little background about who is Jim Howe. Oh, I, 
I'm a, a retired architect and, and transportation planner, and uh, I'm currently with AORTA, Association of Oregon Rail and Transit Advocates. Okay. I'm a, their strategic planning director. So. Okay. Uh, and I've been following this project since, uh, uh, well, back when it was called the Portland Vancouver I-5 Partnership and Trade Partnership. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turned into the CRC in about 2000. So this was just a Portland initiative to begin with? <clears throat> it was, no, it was a bi-state. It was uh, bi-state yeah, bi at the yeah, time? Yeah, but uh, it, it wasn't taken over by the, the Department of Transportation, as I like to call them, the highway departments of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of, uh, Port of Oregon and, uh, and Washington. So uh, in about 2004, they sort of took over this project. And from the beginning, I, I, I seriously believe they wanted to build a mega bridge. <laughs> and so all the other issues that were studied prior to that, the, the railroad bridge, and local bridges were very systematically eliminated from the process, so it would end up as a, a big freeway bridge. Mm -hmm. And it's see where it's gotten us. Uh, we've got a situation where they don't have the money to build it in the first place, and they've gone through several bridge designs because they didn't do it right first time, and now there's a situation where uh, it's not high enough for vessels to, to go underneath. So. I think it's time for them to really look at some of these alternatives that were rejected back in 2000 and well in the area about 2006 when they weeded most of these other uh, uh, options out and you just saw some of those options on that uh, uh, video. Now those alternatives that you were, that we just mm -hmm. saw, yeah. and when were they, were they ever presented, if you will, to the CRC? Uh, <clears throat> the local bridge was presented. I presented it back in 2006, and it was basically rejected because they said there wasn't enough capacity <coughs> to handle the, uh, the traffic. But uh, since that time, traffic actually has gone down. Their projections are way off. And, uh, in what way? And, mm -hmm. and, and their projections of growth, okay. they, they assume that there's going to be a lot more growth in the next 20 years than the projections show. In fact, since they did the projections, it actually has been has declined a bit. So uh, it's it's kind of based on on a, on a false premise. Now they have what they call the purpose and needs for this project. There are basically six purpose and needs, and those purpose and needs can be accommodated with the. Uh, common sense alternative that you... Would you saw. list those, maybe you just go back over just for the benefit Well, of first of all is, is, is the traffic congestion. That was the first, they had to do something about that. Obviously, there is a, a traffic congestion problem there. Uh, there. There was, and I'll probably have to remember all of them, okay. but the second, one, uh, the next one was safety. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the safety issues are related to the lift span. Uh, that bridge opens far more often than it has to, and as you mm. saw on the video, if they would fix the railroad bridge, those bridges would only have to lift maybe once a week, if that, maybe two or three times a month. And so there wouldn't be the congestion caused by mm -hmm. backup traffic, which is a cause of a lot of the accidents. Uh, <clears throat> there's also problems with ramps that get onto that bridge just before you get to the bridge. So actually the capacity of the bridge is, is limited and that can be fixed by eliminating or moving those ramps, which I maybe talk about a little later. Uh, and so a lot of the safety issues could be corrected without tearing down the bridges and building a new one. The next one is freight. That's always one they can bring up as, as a, a need. They need capacity for freight. <clears throat> well, the freight problems are that at the inter basically at the uh, marine drive interchange that's where the the big backup is it isn't the bridge itself it's that and here again if they were to build the rail bridge further downstream you would have another alternative for trucks to cross the river so you would greatly relieve the freight uh, uh, backups at the marine drive interchange <coughs> excuse me uh,
Then uh, there's the uh, the, the issue. Uh, let's see, where's some of the other ones? Uh, well, the well, the Vancouver side too is the same thing. Well, in the Vancouver, this basically is a big freeway project, right. and, and a lot of those interchanges are are right, uh, in Vancouver. It, it's basically trying to solve a problem on the freeway rather than solve a, a bigger transportation problem of how to get people across the river and doing it with a freeway. The only way you can get on Hayden Island now <laughs> is on a freeway, mm -hmm. which doesn't make much sense mm -hmm. at all. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so if you had other alternatives, then it would relieve the, 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 the congestion on the freeway. One of the arguments that's always given that they're, they show their projections, their forecasts that there are going to be backups all day long, mm -hmm. uh, eventually. But they're always comparing it to doing nothing. They, they, all their analysis is compared to a so-called do-nothing uh, option. And no one is suggesting we do nothing. We're suggesting that you do something different. And, and therefore, there would be other options for crossing a river. And of course, the other one, another big issue is light rail. Uh, that's another one of their purpose and needs. They want to have high capacity uh, transit across the river. And in our proposal, we have that. So that's not, not, not an issue. And, and then there's the seismic issue. The, you know, it's all based on uh, the assumption that we're going to have a mega uh, earthquake sometimes within the lifetime of this bridge. Uh, I don't know if anyone ever decided to do the odds on that ever happening, but that probably, I don't think many people would put money on it. It's going to happen within the lifetime of either the bridge is there or a new bridge. But if it did, you would have two other bridges, alternatives for emergency vehicles to get across the river that would be built to mm. meet mm. seismic standards. So the more redundancy you have, the, the less likely you're going to have a major problem if you ever did have that big... Otherwise, you just got one bridge. If anything happens yeah. with one bridge, And, and you have a high bridge. It, it yeah. goes over the railroad fill on, yeah. on the Vancouver side. And a lot of good, a bridge yeah. that's six stories high yeah. is going to be in a big earthquake when mm -hmm. probably every overpass and bridge on I-5 mm -hmm. is going to be mm -hmm. down. So mm -hmm. <laughs> there doesn't have the flexibility that a local bridge has. I'm going to bring Herman in on this, but, yeah. but there's one other point I was going to ask you is that how many governors, <coughs> uh, how many governors were on either, on both from Washington and Oregon that was part of, that was, that was known to be a part of this project during that time? Well, in, in Oregon, we've had two governors but three administrations because it started back in when Kissaber was governor Kisaber before, governor before. And, and then, then we had Kilingoski, Kilingoski, and, and now Kissaber again. Yeah. And then we had the, on the Washington side, we had two governors. That's <laughs> yeah. what, three of them at mm -hmm. that point in time. Interesting. But now the lead people in both of these factions, in this whole faction, is Wash Dot, No Dot. Would you say? Oh yeah, Washington yeah. It's the highway builders. The highway builders. builders. The highway builders. Yeah, and 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 they like to call themselves departments of transportation, but in fact they are departments of uh, uh, highway yeah, departments. Right, right. Herm, why don't you come in on this deal now? Because first, when did you get involved in this deal, and, and the impact that it has on on on, on the island as far as residents? Well, we got when we first got started. So we moved to the island in two thousand seven in mm -hmm. September, and and at oh eight was kind of I had knee operations, so I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But twenty ten is when we really got involved, and that's when we heard about the twenty two lanes going across Hayden Island, mm -hmm. and said, "Oh my God, what are we going? This is insane." Mm -hmm. And so, we, and it was the Safeway store was the other part, for initial part of this. And uh, we we're going to lose the Safeway store, going to lose that pharmacy, lose fresh fruits and vegetables. So we did. That's how uh, Hilp kind of got started with that, and with the CRC killing off the uh, environmental justice mm -hmm. co committee they had set up. And uh, so Hilp got started from that. Our first thing was the Save Our Safeway SOS campaign. Mm -hmm. And then we went on to the 22 lanes, and we went on to other projects to try and uh, get things turned around a little bit. So now, the, through a lot of effort from a lot of people on the island and off the island, that footprint has been 
cut down to about 17 lanes mm. <laughs> going across. It's still huge. I mean, it's <laughs> unbelievably <laughs> huge. And <coughs> that's that's where I, we, I got started. I'm kind of late to the game. Yeah. You know, Jim's been around a long time. A lot of other people were there working on this before I got involved with it. But I've kind of got shoved into this position, which mm -hmm. is fine. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I've, I've enjoyed myself doing it. We try to get things. We were able to get that local <laughs> uh, uh, local arterial bridge put in. You know, it was going to be there because light rail, bicycles, and pedestrians are going to be on it. Mm -hmm. But we got them to add the two lanes so we've got some vehicular traffic that we can get on and off the island without having to rely on the freeway. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is now we just had a couple representatives of CRC at our last HILT meeting on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And we had about 10 questions or so we'd submitted to them. And of course, the first question is, how much funding have you secured for this project? Well, it's a big zero. They yep. have not any securing of funding anywhere. Either state has not committed a dime. Uh, from my, uh, this chart I saw in the, on the state of Washington, they've got projections out for five years on their funding needs. CRC doesn't appear. And they've got projects in, in Washington. There's a two billion dollar project and a billion dollar project, but nothing for CRC. And I was at a joint uh, legislative subcommittee uh, that held a meeting at Metro here a few months ago, and because uh, they're oversight of CRC to find out what's going on, there was a lot of presentation. Jim's plan was presented along with three other alternative plans to deal with the traffic transportation corridor because they've just basically ignored rail they mm -hmm. just they do with highways and bridges and they get the light rail which is 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 a slow way of commuting mm -hmm. light rail it's not fast just fast about mm -hmm. it um but anyway they uh they just there's no they have no money committed from any place you know and the feds don't want to commit money until the states have shown mm -hmm. participation so the the likelihood of them to get federal money at all until the states are committed is pretty unlikely, you know, because we're kind of concerned. We we supported the plan, you know, for help has and uh, uh, at least help has more supported some plan. Mm -hmm. uh, the high noon, the uh, neighborhood association has kind of supported CRC, gone along, tried to you know submit stuff and cooperate, but then they kind of get the short end of the stick all the time. It seems mm -hmm. like and. Um, Anyway, that's that's what kind of what we were at, and we asked them about tolling because that's that's no, an important major, yeah, ingredient yeah. of this whole plan yeah, right. is tolling. Well, that's that's something that's one of those things that will be put off, and we'll we're going to look at that, and we've got to do studies, and we have to analyze because they have to come up with a tolling plan that is investment quality tolling that so they can go to somebody and say, well, we want to sell bonds. And this is the projection of how much revenue we're going to have coming in. It's got to be fairly accurate. They can't just pick a number out of the thin air and say, well, this is what we got. Their existing information is all out of whack because mm -hmm. it's old. It's before the economic downturn. So it's all out of whack as far because traffic flows went down and the revenue from gas because the gas cars are getting better mileage now. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the revenue. The Federal Highway Trust Fund is way behind because it doesn't have the funds coming into it. So there's a there's a shortage of money at the federal level too right. for this project. Right, right. Well, t tell me, as you got into this project more, did you feel you were being heard? I mean, you know, I mean. Yes and no. You know, we got we finally got the local arterial bridge. Then committed to that. Right. Okay. You know, that was an important issue. Probably one of the biggest issues we, as far as the. Hayden Island community is concerned to have that local arterial bridge so that we can got a way to get on and off without having to rely on the freeway. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of elderly people, and I'm in the manufactured home community, we have a lot of elderly people there that are hard for them, mobility is a problem, getting around, doing things. So, uh, you know, that was an important ingredient for safety wise, just to get maybe get an ambulance there. We do have a fire station on the island, but trying to get somebody off the island if it, for an emergency, medical emergency, it would be difficult. You know? mm -hmm. But then that's the one of the things that bothers me about the CRC project is this during construction is there's a lot of things in their uh, information they submitted to the federal government to get their record of decision from the feds that it makes you kind of scary about you know interruptions in gas and mm -hmm. water and electric mm -hmm. during construction. Uh, 
the possibility of you know not having access at some points in time, or you'd be stuck on the island. You know, I was really concerned. And they're right now. Now the other day when they were there, they their their start uh, start date projection has moved off about a year to 2014 now. Mm -hmm. um, the main the start bridge, date of what? I mean, the, gonna, uh, the bridge. No, but I mean, are they going to have the money then? Is that well? The no, they don't know whether they have money or not. <laughs> you know, that's just their what they've moved it off. It was going to be 2013. Yeah. Now it's 2014, and the local arterial bridge is somewhere in 20 early 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they if they can get money. You know, hmm. it's been moving two years ever since. Two years every year. Yeah. But now but the other major concern was the the fact that the voters, if you will, were always concerned about the kind of monies we were being spent on consultant fees. I mean. How much do we spend on this stuff, Jim? 145 million so far, and it's the, the meters. Is still that going. well spent money? Uh, of you course not. Not okay. very, very little of it is well spent. <laughs> uh, the one thing they're doing right now, they're doing test borings right. for this bridge, and uh, that's uh, I think four million dollars for that. That can be salvaged because if they build the local bridge, because they would need to do that anyway. That's part of the alternative. That's one of our you alternatives. Use that one. Yeah, so that is not money wasted. Uh, Herman mentioned the local access bridge. Mm -hmm. That was in our original proposal back in 2004. 2004? Yes, it was, and then it was rejected. Well, a, a variation actually was 2006. It was actually almost identical to what they finally decided to do. So that's salvageable, the local access part of it. So there's two parts that are salvageable. The big bridge itself is not. It can never be built. It's too expensive, and it would have far too uh, many problems, uh, and least of which is the ships can't get under it. So, uh, because our alternative has a lift span lines up with the existing lift opening of the existing bridges, which again would only open very infrequently because we'd fix the railroad bridge. The railroad bridge is interesting. They they had proposed that that be done about 1999 or 2000. Mm. And, and, and in 2004, it was almost intentional to drop any further movement on that, on that uh, fixing the railroad bridge because of this project. In other words, this project would take care of the problem, so they decided not to even pursue it. The federal government back in about 2003, uh, they went for what a, a it's called a Truman Hobbs bill, a money source to do that. It's a Coast Guard uh, improvement. It's, it's for navigation safety. And they didn't get the money from the federal government because the federal government says, well, all your savings is on the highway bridge, and therefore uh, we don't give money for fixing highway bridges. And, and, and the highway department says, well, the money would go on a railroad, so we don't have money for railroad fixes. So nothing happened, although the estimate at the time was $42 million to fix that railroad bridge. Now, how much have they spent studying so far? $145 million studying it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that could have been done by this time. At the time, the estimate was they could have done that in two years. They did a similar thing on the a railroad bridge across the, uh, the Willamette River uh, back in the 80s. So uh, they lost that opportunity, and, and of course, if they had done it, you would not have all the backups uh, behind those lifts that you have today, and you would be on your way to solving the problem. Well, you would, one thing we, we do understand that that $150 million, let's say, about uh, uh, people were employed during that time because somebody got a check. Consultants, yeah. Yeah, somebody got a check, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not, not iron workers. Not iron workers, <laughs> not iron workers. But the iron workers, as you say, and the, and the other folks who would be building the bridge, I mean, they're sort of caught between a rock and a hard place, but they're put up front as if to say, well, look, as soon as you give us the money, we'll employ all these people aspect of it. But the folks behind are saying, no, just keep giving it to us, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, that kind of a deal, fair? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So, so again, on that, on that same note, when I, when I start thinking about you went that far back and making your presentation, you know, before committees and this, that, and the other, and whatever, uh, who was making those decisions during that particular time? I mean, was, there, was, it, was it a fair structure, you know what I mean? Well, the decisions were made by the project team. The project team. team yeah, which, which is, is the consultants and, and the, uh, the staff people of ODOT and WASHDOT. Okay, so WASHDOT and, and ODOT. Yeah. And they reviewed it, and, and 
uh, they could say anything because the, the, the committee that actually they were presenting to, a 39-member uh, task force, right. uh, well, they're the experts. we got to believe and them. And selected by Wash that, no doubt. Yes, yeah, so selected by Wash that. <laughs> <laughs> and so and they're the experts, and who am I? Yeah. <laughs> or who is anyone else that came up with an alternative? We're going to listen to them. And so consequently, they were able, to, with a lot of lobbying and a lot of persuasion, and, and influence the, uh, the uh, public officials to, mm -hmm. to buy into Well, this. let me ask you this other question. You would think the person who was handling the purse strings would be our congressional delegation, right, or our senatorial de delegation. I mean, in that particular time, I think well, this is Ron Ron Wyden's, uh, not Ron, uh, Ron Wyden's and Earl Blumenau mm -hmm. from, from Congress. This is Earl's seat aspect of it. Because I remember I, going back about a couple of years or so ago, I can remember that his staff was involved in some of the presentations, mm -hmm. okay, thinking about the purse string. <coughs> Those issues were brought up at that point in time. Now, have you seen, did you get any kind of reaction from them at all, that as if they were involved about the concerns about how much money was being spent? They, well, what I've heard what from from our delegation is, right. this is a local issue. What? <laughs> it's, you, you folks have to, to come up with a proposal before uh, anything is done at the federal level as far as, uh, as any support from our, our delegation. I, Congress, congressmen don't want to get involved in, <laughs> in local politics, and that's the impression that, that I got. Now, whether some of his ex-staff people were involved, which they were. Yeah, they were. Yeah, one, <laughs> one, comes, one comes to mind since you brought it up. So one did come to mind. Was it Mark Kraft or something? I, yeah, exactly. I remember when he made He's that. He's the one that picked the committee, by the way. Oh, he picked the committee? <laughs> yes. Oh, 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 oh. So I mean, Earl, he made Earl, the Earl, pick, Earl picks the committee. Well, no, he wasn't, I don't think he was working for Earl at the time. Oh, he wasn't working for Earl at the time? No, oh, I don't think so. No, really? I, I can't blame Earl. Can't blame Earl. Can't blame Earl? Huh? You can't blame Earl? No, I don't think so. No, oh, I, I, yeah, boy, I sure no, want to blame him. No, no. <laughs> don't blame him. I just want to find out. I just want to find out who's got the purse string, who's, who's leading the charge. I mean, I know I'm not sitting at the table. Well, I'll tell you who's leading the charge. Who's leading the charge? It's ODOT and Washdot. ODOT and Washdot. Who at ODOT and Washdot? It, it would be the governors from each respective entities, or what? Well, or the chairman of the, uh, the board, the, the or something. Head, head, head of. The, 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 not the commission. Well, the commission. Uh, you got the commission there. She, she was. Oh, uh, she was in favor, but Matt Garrett, who basically has sold a, a very good salesman. Who's Garrett? Now, who's Matt he? Garrett. He he's the uh, director of, of, of uh, the, uh, not the commission, but the department. Of department of transportation. transportation. Now he at, at, at present. And he was then. And he was then. Back in 2004, he I, I was at a meeting where he was selling this. I never saw such a slick sales job as any. And and up in Washington is uh, Hammond. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, in all due respect, most of these guys are from the industry to begin with. You know, they're, they're you know the bridge builders. You know, anything to do with highway and whatever. A lot of times they work for these private consultants, and then all, all of a sudden they get selected, if you will, to work for the state. State ODOT, mm -hmm. you know, ODOT, WASHDOT, whatever. Oh, yeah. So it's all kind of a little yeah. cozy. Well, they're ahead piece. of those two departments, right. WASHDOT right. and ODOT. Right, 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 right. Well, you know, in all due respect, you got to have some technicians, but the bottom line is it's really hitting into that pocketbook. And, and you hear the governors on each side of the aisle are saying that we're short of money, we need more money, raise more taxes and whatever. And, you know, because I, I remember, in all due respect, I've gone to these meetings, and I, at the end of about an hour and a half, and I'm sleeping, I'm still trying to figure out, well, what did they say? What, what did they say? And then, I, and then the next time I know, I'm, taxes are going up on my house. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So, so many, so many dollars per thousand, that type of stuff. So, I, I mean, when do we stop this thing? I mean, what do we do now? Well, it's, it's when common sense comes into play. Yes, right. Well, and, and there is no common sense in this project from the get-go. There was absolutely none. There was this commitment. In fact, this meeting that I attended back in 2000, January 2004, when uh, the ODOT and WASHDOT basically took it over and really moved it, they said they had $50 million. They could get $50 million to do this study. Mm -hmm. Well, what is it now? $145 million. Jesus That shows Christ. how their estimates are. How their estimates on and the And these are state coffers. These are <laughs> yeah. state coffers, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. That they could do it for 50 million. Well, they're up to 145, and they're still ha don't have anything. But uh, there's uh, 
I lost my chain of thought. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll bring Herm in on this point in time. Well, Sean, how, many, how many sleep this meetings did you have? Well, I, <laughs> did you know I what was going on? I stay awake sometimes. <laughs> and I try to limit my meetings so I don't... <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's... Uh, I don't know. The, the money deal is just amazing to me. I mean, they, there's, I mean, they could have fixed some of the problems with mm -hmm. the money they've spent on planning. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like talk about the railroad bridge, and you could fix that problem. Could have fixed that and your local access. Yeah, bridge, really. you know, people could have been working. Yeah, exactly. I mean, not well, just they consultants. Been, they would have been the done meetings. working. They could have been onto something exactly, else. You know, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Doing something else. You know, it's just I, I don't under quite understand why. Well, it's 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 a highway thing. I mean, they did highways. They. The, the original intention was to look at the whole transportation. It's like you know, it was the original thing was the transportation corridor for I five, including rail. Look at the whole mm -hmm. thing, but they chose not to. They're just going to look at the highway part of it because they're a highway department. Mm -hmm. I mean, the rails are private. I mean, privately owned. Burlington Northern Santa Fe owns the railroad bridge, and the bridge across the Willamette, the other railroad bridge. I mean, they own that. That's all private. So they, they don't seem to, you know. The public entities, Oregon Department mm -hmm. of Transportation, Washington Department, they don't want to work with those private entities. Apparently, you know, they just don't know rail, so we just going to ignore that. Mm -hmm. And they could have, you know, they didn't look at all the possibilities. Mm -hmm. They had a focus. They wanted to go on, and they run on that focus. It's like how many directors have C has CRC had? Yeah. You know, I'm just wondering how long Nancy Boyd, this the current director, or they're actually co-directors now, but she's the lead. You know how long she's going to be around, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. before she decides to bail on the mm -hmm. on the project. One thing, uh, one quote from her, and I got it in an email quote, and it was at a meeting she was at, and she said that seventy five percent of the freight traffic that comes down Marine Drive goes north. Well, seventy five percent. How about just a you know, like your bridge, you're going straight across, right, right. You know, a separate pathway for that freight traffic. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes a lot. Makes of, a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but but like we like we say, go right back to the same deal. Somebody's getting a check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. people are getting paid, and you know, yeah. normally if I'm getting paid, I say nothing. Let's just have more more meetings. Yeah. It's like you know, I, I mentioned to Jim one time. This is oh god, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. I think we were, you were one of that Hilt meeting or something. Yeah. I think. And I asked him about you know because I thought thought well why didn't they send because they had the group in that time and then they toured around the whole area here, architects, engineers from around the country and the world, and they looked at everything, and they, they showed them, of course, the CRC probably, they're showing them different bridges, different crossing things, and they just, every one of them, to a man, and I think woman too, I mean, but they just said this is the most horrible thing they ever saw in their life, this crossing thing. And, and, I, and that got me to thinking at the time, I asked Jim about it, well, why didn't they do that to begin with? Why didn't they put this out to a nationwide or worldwide design competition mm -hmm. and who'd come up with the best solution for this transportation corridor. But he said, well, no, Warshdot and ODOT said, no, we can handle it. Jeez. We've got some money. We can do it. Don't worry about it. So who's in well, charge? Well, we're worrying about it now. Jeez, he is. <laughs> well, well, Matt Garrett said at that meeting, I was that's where I lost my chain of thought, that uh, they were going to build a mega bridge. That, I mean, that was in 2004. Before they had gone through all the screening process, they were going to do it. That's, that's, I mean, they, that was before it. they went through all the screening process, he says they were going to build a mega bridge. So, it's a case of, you know, shooting the arrow, and they've been painting the bullseye around that arrow ever since. And so they got a they got a bullseye because they, <laughs> they did it backwards. And, <laughs> and, and you know, for a fact, like you said, you got bridge builders, et cetera, and you know, you got the AGC is very much involved in that associated general contractors. You got the unions, right? And you got the trades and this, that, and the other. They're not working. <laughs> they're, they're not working either. Yeah. But yet, and still, they're so still supported, if you will, mm -hmm. supportive of the whole concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the people who are actually making the monies, mm -hmm. if you will, as you say, are the consultant aspect of it. And, and it's sort of miserable down there for the residents. You know, I'm oh, yeah. I'm part of a floating home, uh, you know, community, right. mm -hmm. and a lot of we a number of us were told that hey, you're not going to be able to live there. We're going to take out so many, yeah. so many homes. And these people were threatened, trying to figure out what to do. Some of it moved, and trying to figure out what we're we going to do, et cetera, et cetera. You, yeah. you know, what, what do I do? Am I going to get fair value for my property, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? So uh, there could have been a loss. 
sort of in a lost situation. And, and, but according to the alternative aspect of it, they won't be. They wouldn't be losing any homes. Yeah. That's from what I see, from what you've shown us yeah. at no. this point in time, you wouldn't be losing anything, right? And, and the impact on the on the residents of the island right. with common sense alternative and the other pro, other proposals right. from other groups would have virtually no effect on on our livability on the island during the construction processes. Wouldn't bother and the businesses too, right? And yeah, the, businesses, the businesses, all the business will stay intact, yeah, right? right? People could still be employed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we we got to miss, but we got to find some leadership from some standpoint. Uh, is well, it the governor now? Because <coughs> someone's got to say the emperor has no clothes on this. Right, exactly. And yeah. and uh, so far, the governors are the ones that should be saying that, and they're not. Well, this is his second time around. I mean, I, I see him taking some very bold uh, positions, if you will. One on the education mm -hmm. piece. And maybe this might be one he might want to take a mm -hmm. take a second look at and say, look, I'm going to do something. And Jim, come on up here and bring me that alternative <laughs> and maybe look at the show. Maybe we'll email this show to him because you need to send it to him. I think you need to get involved. The in one that. thing I didn't cover any of the details in that particular video, but we, we've gone to this extent of looking at some of the details on how to fix the fundamental problem mm -hmm. with the freeway. And one of the fundamental problems is you have a six-lane bridge or two mm -hmm. bridges with three lanes in each direction. You have a six-lane freeway. But the problem is the outside lanes of each one of those bridges cannot is not a through lane because it's used as a, an acceleration lane because you have a ramp coming right onto the bridge mm -hmm. at each end. Mm -hmm. And our s proposal eliminates, eliminates those them, ramps yes. and diverts exactly. those ramps so you don't have that problem, so that bridge can actually handle the full mm -hmm. six lanes of the freeway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest backup on the freeway is, is because of those, those ramps. You know, another thing that comes to mind is that, uh, and you, you can come in on this piece, but I think about the media and how they've responded to this piece. And it's kind of like everyone is isolated. You know, it's just like a little, little something over here. It's a bridge thing, whatever, mm -hmm. but only a few people. Uh, you know, the homeowners on the island, this, that, and the other. But other than that, that's nothing. What do you think? Do you think the media is doing a fair job, like the Oregonian or the Tribune or the or Salem Journal, whatever? Well, I, I, the Oregonian certainly hasn't. They haven't. No, no, not, they've done a terrible job, in my opinion. I think the uh, the Columbian has. The Columbian has. Yeah, they. I I read that online every morning, and yeah, that's where you get your information from the Columbian, not from the Oregonian, uh, in my opinion. Well. What about Willamette Week? You know, I mean, Ron was associated point one time. And they, 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 well, they, they've they're done, just a small group. They, they've done some good. You know how Willamette Week take right, a, a, right. an issue and then blow it up. And and, and they did. Uh, was it Jake was? Yeah, he, he yes, did a yeah, he did a good yeah, one. Right, right. Uh, and uh, but boy, but, trying to get the attention of some of the folks. Money is being spent. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and folks do want their employment. I mean, I want the employment. I mean, yeah. people need to work. We need yeah. to work. But the, the bottom, bottom line is, at the end of the day, it, all the other considerations. I mean, the fact of the matter is, your alternative doesn't doesn't displace anybody on the island. None of the businesses, none of the residents, yeah. et cetera. The echo, the environmental mm -hmm. stuff, all this other stuff that we, we we're concerned with. Nothing gets is done. So something needs to be done. Fair. Yeah. I, yeah. And actually, you know, our alternative for the rail bridge would give Hayden Island that access right. on and the west end that, yes. that the port doesn't yes. want to give them. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, animal the habitat, west, all kinds of goodies are there. Yeah. Well, look, uh, folks, I guess yeah. we're going to have to just keep on doing it, right? Yeah, keep yeah. on trucking. Yeah, keep and I think our lead, in all due respect, our lead person would be the governor in this particular case because mm -hmm. the feds on the, on the rural side, yeah, I guess we... We, we blame you notice he hasn't there. come out for the project. Yeah, and there's only, only, only <laughs> yeah. I've noticed. written I've written Boomenauer and Fazio, Fazio both, you know, in the past, and they always come back. Well, when you local residents decide what you're going to do, then we'll we'll be on board. Yeah. He is, boy, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I should have ran this time. How much should've, leadership from the? I should have ran this time, right? <laughs> <laughs> you should have. I mean, stirred it up a bit, but he yeah. won't. He won't debate me, though. He won't no. debate me. He won't debate me. But that's okay. Well, look here, uh, Jim. Thank you very much. Well, thank this you has very been much. very informative. And Herm, as usual, I know you're right on the thank front you. line. And you know, we'll just keep using this as a way. And I would suggest that what we're going to do. We're going to email in this piece because, as you know, it's on YouTube. And by the oh, way, yes. and for those folks of you out there who, who have Comcast and have access to the um, 
to the show that's fine but you can also uh, in fact you can put that YouTube on the on the screen guys appreciate that for the folks you can YouTube uh, uh, folks who don't have TV for that matter and if they just have access to to the to the website or to the computers they can look at the show and uh, maybe we can get this to the governor's office that might be a way of educating people around the state and maybe even send it to the presidential folks who are running for office. I don't know. Yeah. It, might, it might be pittance compared to the kind of money that they're talking about yeah. getting yeah. in that campaign. But it would be a good issue here in this area. So, okay, so on that particular note, um, thanks for being with us. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back uh, for another 15 minutes of some, some interest. Jim, thank you very much. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Herm, always a pleasure. You, you. You'll be on next time around. You sit yeah. on this seat. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on for a minute. Okay, we'll take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. encouraged by the show. Welcome back, folks. Look like we've got about another 10 minutes, and I thought what we'd do this point in time around is that uh, we would spend a couple minutes kind of get a little update on, on education. Okay. Uh, it's gonna it's a very serious situation at this point in time as far as education here within within the state of Oregon. As you know, we've been, we've been uh, talking to Dr. Harris uh, here in, over the last two or three shows, for that matter, and uh, it's a very serious piece. I realize you don't want to get involved and many of us, you know, maybe they're thinking this is just too much activism and whatever. But the fact of the matter is, uh, it is a concern with the governor at this point in time. Mm -hmm. He's just recently hired someone yes. uh, to take the lead role on this whole piece. Mm -hmm. He is now the new superintendent. Yes. Uh, I mean, everybody's sort of bending his ear exactly. at this point in time. I know they're <laughs> bending his ear. But, you know, in all due respect, a person who has the background in this, that, and the other has, has been giving us the opportunity to get a little insight of what's going on in our education system, i.e. with the largest district in the state of Oregon, which is Portland Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And you see all kinds of write-ups, even of late, yes, if you I've will, where, that. where people are concerned about their monies, et cetera, and, and their kids, and, uh, and are those kids graduating. And more, we've got a summer coming at this point in time, and what about these young people? Mm -hmm. They have nowhere to go. Just like wow. I talked about the bridge to nowhere. Mm -hmm. These kids have nowhere to go. Uh, activities are lacking, if you will. Education is lacking, if you will. Jobs are scarce, if you will. Uh, people who are graduating from college don't have business job, et cetera. So I got Dr. Harris at this point in time. Dr. Harris, are you getting any response at all? I mean, <laughs> well, um, yes. Yeah, so people are sending me some responses. They really love the last. Well, they like all the shows, but they thought the last one was very forthright and revealing and just uh, shed a lot of light on okay. what's going on in my personal experience. So I thought it was good as well. So thank you for that, well, the well, opportunity it, to share. And well, what I'm about just the, really what looking about forward new... to what uh, what's Rudy Crew going to do. Yeah, well, yeah, what about Dr. <laughs> Dr. Crew? Well, any, any, um, any, I have. Any I don't access? know him personally. Have you sent and him I would love, No, I'm going to send him. Send some, him I'm going to send him my yeah, resume. Yeah. But um, I know that he's uh, listening to a lot of people, which I think right, is right. what he has to do. Right. And we know that he has a very um, um, interesting resume. You know, he's been... He oh, has a really, yeah. really um, huge leadership issues, and he's solved a lot of problems. So I'm just waiting to see how he's going to approach the situation in Oregon. He has a lot of work cut out for him. But, but let's be real. Steady. You were an assistant superintendent of one of the yeah. largest school districts yeah. in the state of Oregon. Yeah. You were in administration, mm -hmm. and then you also went to a sore thumb, I call it, at this point You in think time. it was a sore thumb? The Jefferson High School <laughs> yeah. aspect of it. You were there, and you yes. were 
actually involved in that process. Exactly. So you you involved in probably ninety percent of the so called yeah, issues and concerns yeah. that our union had. Mm -hmm. You know, i.e. these minorities and yes. English as a second language. Things yeah. like that. You've got all this insight and I think it would be of a it would be wealth to them. Well I would to love to just have a table. conversation with Would you have any problems sitting at the, as part of that Absolutely committee? Absolutely would have uh, no problem working, at all. Working with the governor maybe I would, a, I would love to uh, I would love to just have a conversation with Rudy Crew about my experience. Exactly, exactly. And to just see where he's headed and see if he has questions for me or right, have right. a dialogue with me. From the district standpoint. Yeah, so I will, I welcome that. Wow, wow, wow. Well, gee whiz, I, I, I tell you what, I've got a lot of respect for you, and the fact of the matter is you were there. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. that you were on a PTA mm -hmm. or this, that, and the other. You were a paid <laughs> Yeah, right in the You were right in the middle right of it Right on the ground, all, you know? yeah, making it happen. And, you know, in all due respect, uh, even some of the folks who have objected to what you were doing, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other, you would think that, you know, I have, I, the, the main interest is about the kids. But, you know, Chain, I was thinking about, as I looked and reviewed the shows, mm -hmm. one of the things that really occurred to me, Everybody has to be aligned because right. nobody really wants to change. And if mm -hmm. there's change, they don't want it to change them. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, one of the backward thoughts I have sure. you know, after reflection is the dialogue has to come on the front end. Everybody has to be in alignment uh, with the change, the companies, the, the leaders, all the people in the community. So you can't just throw change there. You have to be process oriented mm -hmm. and you have to work in, in coalitions that will facilitate that change. So Do you think that the that the governor Kitzhopper by by IE selecting uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Cruz was the right thing to do, if you think? Well I'm never gonna say it's the wrong thing as long as okay. he's governor. I'm gonna say yeah. what he yeah, does right, is right. right. right, right, right. <laughs> but but the thought And I him. think um, it'll be interesting um, how the process rolls out. I think mm -hmm. that's where that's where the rubber will meet the road. I think that he sees something that we don't do because he has the broadest perspective. Mm -hmm. And I'm always so respectful of people who are on the peak of the mountain because they see what we don't see. I see my little piece, you see your piece. Yeah. So we, we just uh, trust that he wants to make the biggest change and get the most mileage possible. We support that. And um, I'm excited to see a person of color in that position. Mm -hmm, so, of course, mm -hmm. I'm going to be very supportive and welcoming to Rudy Crew and excited to share any bits of information that I can. So mm -hmm. I'm excited mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope the, the media, you know, uh, like I, the Oregon Voters Digest, like we're doing at this mm -hmm. point in time, will do sort of an ongoing kind of uh, reporting, if you will. I'd love to see Rudy uh, on this show yeah, and coming yeah, to talk well, to, the, to the as one would say, just let him know. <laughs> well, when I see there. him, I will definitely let him sure. know. Everyone. Well, he's got three years, you know, and I mm -hmm. think the entire community uh, who are very concerned about the kids uh, mm -hmm. in this state uh, are wanting to help, you got me? And, uh, you know, he just can't just sit back just trying to explain what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. He has to be able to do something. And naturally, parents are going to have to be very much involved in this mm -hmm. process. Absolutely. And the kids, right? Well, that was a key, too, when I was looking at your show. It's like... You have to have community engagement, and, mm -hmm. and no part of the community can sit back and let somebody do it for them. Mm -hmm. They need to be engaged and be responsible for that engagement and be systemic about it through their organizations, and they have to be responsible to also help raise some of the money. You can't just wait for everybody to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to do your fair share. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, with these shows, I've been able to clarify my own mind yeah. what needs mm -hmm. to be done, clarify the good that was done, clarify the errors that were made and move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just thinking about that, that too, also, too. Would you have any problem if uh, if the present superintendent of Portland Public School give you a call and maybe get you on board as a consultant? That's a hard question. I was thinking about that. You know, I don't any have problem? an answer for that one. Okay. I realized there were some other issues. I know there were <laughs> personality issues and this, that, and the other. Actually, somebody said, that to to, somebody said that to me recently. I have to really think about that. Okay. But I, I absolutely don't mind working with the community. I'm still involved with the Black Women of Peace, which they have an event coming up June 15th, okay. uh, working with young people. I'm involved with AXO, with the NAACP. And I'm involved at Emmanuel doing some work with young people with Bishop C.T. Wells, who really wants to make an, a difference in the community, and I do some parent engagement. So I'm involved with the community until my big job comes and yeah. things are starting to but trickle But Dr. In. Harris, in all due respect, <laughs> i got to respect your educational background. Oh, You've thank you. have got an you. educational background. I mean, it's just sitting there and to be used, if you exactly. will. Exactly. And in all due respect, I think it would be, a, it would be an advantage, if you mm -hmm. will, of our system and what we're trying to do to have you on board, even if it's just a matter of having you on board for a week just to educate them oh. about, about well, you what, know, what when you doing. say it like that, I would say yes. If okay. I was invited and in, encouraged to do that, and they gave me a salary for doing that, yes. oh, I yeah. would be happy yeah. Yeah. to um, 
uh, to do that. I think I've grown a lot in the last two years. I certainly think I've reflected on the situation and I'm very encouraged by my own self as to what I was asked to do and what I did. So, you know, I'm loving myself, loving what I'm doing. Yeah, and so yeah. I'd be happy to do that. I'm, I'm more happy to work with the community, to the parents and to some of the community leaders who may need another way of looking at, you know, what's going on. Well, so I'm excited. The, lead, the leadership needs you need to be in the educational arena. That's what you <laughs> Well, you know, when you talked about my education, important. I would say that you were correct because I've been doing this change work since I was in my 20s. Yes. And so that's a long time. Yeah. And so I do have a lot of information for people who want to hear it. <laughs> yes, yes. So and I want to thank you for just opening this opportunity up for me and just putting it out to the community. It's so awesome. Well, Dr. Harris, we need you. Thank you. And those kids need you yeah. big time, okay? Yeah. And, and I hear from the parents all the time. I mean... I'm just so moved. It touches my soul so much when the parents talk to me about their children. I never know where these parents are going to mm -hmm. be. They're at churches. They're at the Good in the Hood. They're at the Juneteenth. They're at the store. So I have, I do know I made a difference because they tell me, that's my feedback. The students tell me and their parents tell me. Maybe not for every single person, but for a lot of them. I did make a difference, so I'm you know, excited you know, about that. You know, when I think about it, when I think about it, you know, again, I, I, as you know, I, I don't like the idea of, of young African-American males being put in the place of gangs and this, that, and the other. You know, mm -hmm. It's about education. Yes. And when I think about that, I say, well, gee whiz, why not give them another venue, if you will, another chance? What about a what about a charter school? What about yourself well, I'm as a charter school? Well, I'm actually interested in that. I, I received... Um, an inquiry asking me to interview back east for something very similar to what I was trying to do where a lot of businesses have got together put a lot of money together right. and they want to see change in right. one of the states uh, in the south and I'm looking at that as a possibility but I would definitely be open for a charter school because I think that's the next route I'm going to look at because as an like innovator I mean, we about ed, I'm interested in your, your very, piece very, about Volk oh, we got to have Volk but, um, yes I'm very interested in some innovative ways so I'm open to that students okay. first making a difference Good. and showing vision teaching yes. everybody that we can do it and we're responsible and we can have favor in our own community and we make a difference well I tell you what I'm going to follow up on that with you and Thank hopefully you. you out there in the viewing audience look hey you hear here's this lady ready to go to work our, our young people need her our graduation need her and uh, please get to the governor you can email him this show and uh, and all the shows that you've seen with dr. Harris and uh, it's not a personality type thing it's a very serious situation that we're sitting up here and dr. Cruz need that support and we in the community want the yeah, results we of these say kids. Yeah, I want to say congratulations to Rudy Crew. Yes, we well, well, hey, really want to be working with them yeah. to make a difference. Well, well, look, folks, thank you again very much uh, for being with us. Again, this is a very serious thing. Like I said to you before, uh, we got politics in the air, but we got politics right here politics in the city the of Portland, okay? <laughs> yeah. And uh, very serious, something that really, really hits me very hard. And uh, to see that all these young people. In fact, when I when I look at the the grad when I looked at the graduation, mm -hmm. and I saw the lack, if you will, in all due respect of the of African Americans yes. being a part of the scholarships and things of that mm -hmm. nature, but yet and still here we're sitting at well, yeah, well, I can go on and on and on that piece. But thank you very much, Dr. It's Harris. It's my pleasure. Going to have you back and, on. And our kudos to you as well. Right. Goodbye. And, <laughs> and as, as one would say, from George Page, back to what you believe in. Back have to, a good day. Yes.